Building your primary product list part two. In this lesson you're actually going to start building your list of primary products. And we're also going to be showing you the ASM workbook which is where you're going to record all the data for the products that you find. Okay so here we are at Amazon and just before we start searching I just wanted to show you a file. And this is what we call the ASM workbook and we're going to be using this throughout the course to keep track of all our potential products and hot opportunities and I'm going to be using this as we go through this lesson. Now you do need to be logged in to use it so I'm quickly going to log into one of my Google accounts and then once you're logged in you want to go to file and click on make a copy. It's very important you create your own version of this file because this file will be seen by all ASM members. So if you start editing this one, then every member is going to see it. So you want to click on make a copy and you want to give it a name. So I'll just call it Rich ASM Workbook. If you're used to working with Google, you can put it in a folder, but just putting it on the drive is fine and click OK. Once you've done that, you can close the original and then you want to copy this URL. And that means that whenever you need to go and access it, you can just use this URL. So copy the URL by right clicking and clicking copy and then put it in a file on your computer so you don't lose it. But let's go back to Amazon. Now we're going to start in Kitchen and Dining again because that's where we left off in the previous lesson. And remember Kitchen and Dining is actually a top level category even though it appears underneath Home and Kitchen. So I'm going to put the minus symbol in, a bunch of random letters, click on the All button to look at all the categories. I'm going to go to Home and Kitchen because if you remember Kitchen and Dining is under Home and Kitchen and click Search. Then on the left hand side I'm going to click on Kitchen and Dining. I'm going to scroll down, put in a price range which is $19 to $70 but I'm using $18.99 to $70 and click Go. Once the page loaded I'm just going to click on the four square icons at the top right and then I'm going to click on Jungle Scout. Now as you're going to see as we move through this, especially the first four or five, six, seven, eight, nine, even ten pages, we're going to be deleting a lot of the results because they're either on our products to avoid list or they don't match our BSR range which will use the filter to remove. It's completely normal and the further you go, the more effort you put in and the more pages you extract and look at, the better your results will be. Now you could go through and extract ten pages and work with those with the filter and removing stuff and then extract another ten. I'm going to show you one page at a time for these first few pages and then I'll go and extract a lot of pages. It just makes it easier for you to see what's going on. So I'm going to click on the three lines in the top left. Here's our filters. I know the BSR range for kitchen and dining is 250 to 6,500. And then in the highest weight, I'm going to put three pounds. And that's all I'm interested in right now. And then I'm going to click filter results. I'm going to close the filter. Now this first product is a Brita replacement filters. Generally speaking, replacement products for a brand name are not a product we would go for. So in this case, most people that have a Brita water jug are actually going to look for Brita replacement filters. It's a very competitive market and it's something we definitely wouldn't go for. So if I move across where the number column is, if you put your mouse over any number, it will present a cross and you just click on it and it's gone. The next one is actually coffee pods for a coffee machine. It's on the products to avoid list so I know I'm going to delete it. And I know in this category we're going to see a lot of coffee pods in the initial pages. So I'll delete that one. Green Mountain Coffee again. Two Rivers. It's another coffee. Kicking Horse Coffee. Grove Square, <laughs> Grove Square Cappuccino. Tea Powder. Tea is a very very competitive market. And to try and break into a brand dominated market like tea is very very hard. So it's something I would remove. It's not something I'm interested in. And actually, even more than that, it's in Grocery and Gourmet. And again, you're going to see a lot of products in Grocery and Gourmet while you're searching Kitchen and Dining or even Home and Kitchen. And Grocery and Gourmet Food is actually a gated category. And if you remember from the category lesson, we don't recommend you go after anything in a gated category for your first product. So I'm going to delete that and the next one is more coffee but it's also in Grocery and Gourmet so I'm going to delete it and boom. Our first page that started off with 60 results we've got nothing. Completely normal. Just keep working your way through. So I'm going to extract another page by clicking on extract next page. Once it's finished extracting I'm going to click on the three lines. Now I won't let you click on filter results again unless you change something. So I'm going to remove the zero from 6500 and then put it back and click filter results. And as you can see it's removed another 90 plus results because more than likely it didn't match our price range or our BSR range. So Green Mountain Coffee again that can go. Tim Horton, shout out to my Canadian friends, that can go. I've got a Brita jug again, incredibly competitive market. It's not something I'm going to go after. 
more coffee, more coffee. And then we've got this product, Oxo Good Grip Simply Tear Standing Paper Towel Holder. This is a potential product. It matches all our criteria. So we're actually gonna record this. We could carry on um, extracting more pages, but what we recommend is that you actually record anything that looks potentially a decent product straight away in case you accidentally close the app or the app removes a product by mistake or something on those lines. So this is a potential product. The easiest way to put this information into your workbook is to right click on the product name, select copy link address, go to your workbook. So in the first box under product URL, we're just gonna click in the box and paste it in and there it is. Now, this is an incredibly long URL as you can see. We don't need the entire URL. We basically only need up to the end of the ASIN number, which is this number right here. The easiest number to find where to go to is you want to remove everything after the forward slash after the ASIN number. And that always starts with REF. So from REF, we're gonna drag it all the way across and delete it. It just makes the URL smaller and easier to deal with. Now, we're not gonna put the keyword in yet. That's something we're gonna do in the next lesson. But if we go back, the price is $24.95 and it's in Home and Kitchen. So we're gonna click in the category box and put, I'm just gonna put HK. I know what that stands for. It's Home and Kitchen. You can type the whole category name in if you wish. And then the price was $24.95. And then I'm gonna hit the tab button. Now the last thing we're gonna include in this lesson is the BSR number. So the BSR you can see here is 530. So we're gonna put that in. And you can actually jump ahead and put in the reviews number two. It'll save you doing it in the next lesson. So reviews, it's got 1781. So that's it, you wanna fill in the URL, the category, the price, the BSR, and the reviews. And then we can go back to Amazon. Okay, so I just realized I probably forgot to give you the link to find your workbook and it's simply amazingsellingmachine.com forward slash ASM workbook. And I'll put the link in a box on the page right now, but you can also find it in the lesson guide below the video. So we've added the Good Grips paper towel holder. So we'll carry on. So another coffee packet freezable lunch bag. So not entirely sure about this one, but I'm going to open it up by clicking on the title and boom. Straight away, look at all these different variations. So it's virtually impossible to tell exactly which are the good variations anyway, but also having to add more than one variation will make your inventory much more difficult and much more expensive. So I'm gonna delete it. And this especially applies because it's your first product. We recommend you stay away from anything that's got a lot of variations. So next one, okay, so it's an appliance that plugs into the wall. Now we're not saying you can't go after a product that plugs into a wall socket. But there are concerns, obviously, about liability if someone hurts himself or electrocutes himself or something along those lines. And also, generally speaking, products that plug into an electrical socket that come from China or outside of America tend to be slightly lower quality. And if you try and get these products in the US, you'll find they're very expensive, so your profit margin will get ruined. So it's something we stay away from. Generally speaking, all small appliances are things we ignore. So I'm gonna remove that one. Water bottles, it's on our products to avoid list. So I'm gonna delete it. Spiral vegetable slicer. So it's basically a vegetable spiralizer, which is on our products to avoid list. So we're gonna delete that. This one, I don't even know what it is, but you can see here, kangaroo trademark. Generally speaking, we'll stay away from them, but let's just take a quick look at what it is. And straight away, we can see it's got a lot of color variations and it's also got size variations too. So again, I'm just gonna delete it. This is basically a replacement filter and I'm not entirely sure what it does, but I'm actually going to delete it. The next one, Thermos Stainless King Food Jar. But let's take a quick look, I'm gonna open it up. So we've got four variations, so it's not a ton of variations. From the variations point of view, it's not terrible, but it's a big brand name and it's vacuum sealed. And generally speaking, you wanna stay away from vacuum sealed products because they tend to be really, really competitive. So I'm gonna delete that one. So as you can see, we're not doing great. We've only got one product so far, but it's completely normal. Um, you'll find it, anything up to the first 10 pages that you're gonna be removing more than you're keeping for definite. And it's nothing to worry about. You just keep moving through. I'm gonna do one more single page like this, assuming I find at least one more product. And then I'm gonna go away, pause the video, and go and pull a ton of them for us to work through. So I'm gonna click on the three lines again, delete the last zero, add it back, and click filter results. Close the filter and let's take a look at this page. Okay, so the next one on the list. It's a vacuum travel mug, product to avoid list. Furnace filters, gonna get rid of them. It's another water type bottle. Paper towels, it's something we don't recommend. Same as toilet roll. There's not much profit margin. They tend to be bulky to ship. 
So it's something we avoid. Got more coffee. Got another vacuum insulated tumbler and it's in Grocery and Gourmet too. More coffee, more coffee. Now I've got a non-stick frying pan. Again, this is not something I would personally go for, but let's open it up to take a look. And if we go down here and we look at the product dimensions, it's 18 by 12, so you're right on the edge, being an oversized product with Amazon. And if you add that to a pretty heavy weight of 2.3 pounds, it's just not gonna be viable. So I'm gonna delete that one. Coffee filters, again, get rid of that. More coffee, more coffee, more coffee. Got a stainless steel mug, again, it's a travel mug. Um, it's on the products to avoid, get rid of it, more coffee. These are all grocery and gourmet. Got another thermos product, ignore that. Blender bottle, it's a water bottle for starters, so it's on the products to avoid list. And blender bottle itself are very keen on going after anyone who, who uses anything that's remotely like the patent or trademark they've got on their product. I'm gonna remove it. Another water bottle or water filter. Got a 12 pack of towels. Again, it's bulky. I'm pretty sure there are gonna be a lot of variations with this. So I'm gonna remove it. Another stainless steel mug. Food containers, I'll open this up. I'm pretty sure they're gonna have variations too. And there you go, we've got eight different variations. Plus, they're pretty bulky products if you look at them. So shipping's gonna be an issue too. So I'm gonna close that down. I'm gonna delete that one. Now I've got an eight inch chef's knife. Now, now I do know that chef's knives are competitive, but I'm gonna leave this one in for now because it'll be a good example to show you when we get to the next lesson. So I'm gonna right click copy the link address, go back to our workbook, paste the URL into the next line. I'm gonna go up to this line here, find the REF, and remove everything from that onwards. And then it's $24.99 kitchen and dining, and the BSR is 626, and it's got 158 reviews. So that's the information for that one. Let's go back to Amazon, got some more coffee capsules, more coffee, got a mixer, more coffee, more coffee. Okay, so I'm gonna go away now. I'm gonna go and extract seven or eight pages all at once so that we can go through a bunch of them without having to keep coming back and applying the filters. Okay, so as you can see, I've gone and extracted a bunch of results. I went through eight or nine pages. I'm gonna click on the three lines and apply the filter. And you can see it's removed about 500 results. And now what I'm gonna do is, because I've got so many results to look at, is I'm actually gonna sort by category. To do that, all I need to do is click on category. Now the reason I've sorted by category is just to make it easy to remove things. This first one is actually an Amazon Launchpad. The problem with Amazon Launchpad is, it's not one of our categories, so we don't have a BSR for it. So I'm gonna remove it. Baby, obviously that's an okay category, but it's a vacuum sealed product and it's by Thermos. I'm gonna delete it. Clothing is not in our recommended categories. So I'm gonna remove the next two. And I'm just gonna pause the video while I go through and remove all the grocery and gourmet products. So I've removed all the grocery and gourmet products from here and now we'll carry on. So obviously that's the first one we had. So what have we got? Compost bin. Got a funny feeling that's gonna be too big, but let's take a quick look. I'm gonna open it up, scroll down, 11 by eight by eight. Now, while it isn't bigger than the oversize recommendations, it's still a pretty big product. And for first product, it's gonna be pushing the limits. So I'm actually gonna close it and I'm gonna delete it. Okay, so we've got, interestingly enough, we've got another paper towel holder. So I'm gonna leave that one in. And again, we're gonna right click, copy the link address, go back to our workbook, paste it into the next line, remove everything, including the ref and after ref. It's $24.99 in home and kitchen. And it's BSR is 1476 and it's got 918 reviews. Okay, so that's that product recorded. Let's go back. Stainless steel double wool French coffee press. Could be a possibility. So I'm gonna add that one, copy the link address. And if you're in doubt, add it to your list because you will find out when we go through the next lesson whether it is a viable product or not. It's 1993 in Home and Kitchen. The BSR is 1696, 3,165 reviews. I'm pretty sure we're gonna be deleting this product when we get to the next lesson because it's unlikely a product with 3,000 plus reviews is gonna have two competing products with a low number of reviews, but we will find out. And that's the beauty of this system. You keep moving through and then you can narrow them down later. Kitchen towels, again, it's not something I'm interested in. So we're gonna delete it. So we've got another one of these comfort things for standing on. So I'm actually gonna take this one and we're gonna look at it because it's a product I don't know about. And I'm just gonna open it up because I just wanna check the dimensions because it's interesting that's appeared twice. Uh, so we've got multiple variations here, so I'm not too keen on it. And if we scroll down, it's a really nice listing. And there you go, dimensions, 32 by 20 by one. So way too big. 
Obviously it's too firm to be rolled up because obviously that could reduce the size but at 32 by 20 it's oversized and we're going to ignore it. Shelf liners, I'm not quite sure what these are but let's go take a look. So we've got four size variations and we've also got color variations so it's not looking great and then package dimensions again we're looking at 35. I'm not quite sure that that's correct because that's over three foot but the fact it's got the variations combined with that I'm going to remove it. I've got another insulated bottle got a Whirlpool refrigerator replacement filter so again we're not going to be interested in that food con storage container I've got a funny feeling this will be too big but let's take a quick look so again we've got multiple variations I thought this was like one product that all fitted together but it doesn't look like that and it's got different size sets and individual again too complicated for us so I'm going to delete that one okay we've got another source bin again I'm not overly keen on those so I'm going to remove it Johnny apple peeler okay so this looks interesting so I'm gonna take it so let's go put that in our workbook paste in the URL remove everything including the ref and it's kitchen and dining and it's 335 something I haven't mentioned which I should have mentioned by now is if you're looking at a product in a different category you need to look at the BSR range for that category now fortunately the products we've picked are all in home and kitchen but they all fall within the range for home and kitchen so we're all good but just bear that in mind if you're looking at a different category then you need to match the BSR range for that category. A lot of them are similar, but just make sure that you're looking at the BSR range for the correct category. So this one is 335 in kitchen and dining, and it's $19.50, and it has 2878 reviews. Again, it's probably gonna to be too many, but we'll find that out in the next lesson. Oxo Good Grips cutting and carving board, and we've also got four different variations and three different colors. So we've got seven different variations there. I just wanna check the dimensions just to make sure and there you go the dimensions we've got 21 inches is one of the dimensions so it would be oversized so again we're going to delete it chef knife no idea so we're going to copy that link it looks decent enough i'm going to paste that in and it's in kitchen and dining it's 626 in kitchen and dining it's 24.99 with 158 reviews now i think you've seen enough examples so what i'm actually going to do is i'm going to pause the video i'm going to work through the rest of these results and add any winning results to the workbook and then come back to the video. Okay, so I went through all those results and pulled a few more products whose viability I will check in the next lesson. But before finishing off this lesson, I just want to point out a few more things that are very important when you're doing this. If we go back to Amazon, first of all, the results I got were basically only through searching 10 pages. You can go much, much deeper in a category than 10 pages so that you have far more choice for your opportunities. Now, we do recommend that you actually build your primary list with at least two categories. But if you're absolutely 100% sure you want to stick to one category, then just keep going deeper and deeper and deeper until you get to a point where the pages don't give you any results. And that will be because the BSR ranges just won't match. In other words, they'll all be way outside. They'll be 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 even. Now, if you do want to do that, you don't have to do it all at once. So if we go back to the search, and here we are back at the start. First of all, you can count the number of pages you extract. So for instance, if you went through one session and extracted 10 pages and wants to go back later and start from that position, then the easiest way to do it is actually to close Jungle Scout and use Amazon to go through 10 pages. Just one thing to note, if you come back later, you have to put the price ranges in again. And that applies if you change to a different category too. But all you would do is keep going through. So that's page two, page three, I'm just going to jump ahead. You can see I'm now on page 9. I'm going to click once more. So I'm on page 10 now. So if I had extracted 9 pages in my previous session, then I would come to page 10 and then click Jungle Scout. It means that Jungle Scout starts searching from this page and not from page 1. So you don't have to go through all the same results again. Now what we do recommend is that you go for a page before that because searches can change and Amazon can show different results. So if you did 10 pages before, then start on page 9 or 10. And while you will get a couple of duplicate results, you'll be able to see them obviously, but it also means you're less likely to miss any opportunities. So that's what you can do if you want to come back. And the same applies if you decided after doing 10 pages in kitchen and dining that you wanted to try a different category. So again, I'm going to close Jungle Scout. So if you suddenly decided, okay, I've done 10 pages, I'm not terribly excited by the results in this category, but do remember going further might find more exciting products. For instance, you could go to sports and outdoors. So all you do is you leave the same search in, sports and outdoors. The only thing you need to check is when you click search, check that the price range is still there. More often than not, it won't be. 
So I would have to put this in again, click go, and then I'm gonna click the four boxes, and then I would click on Jungle Scout. So as long as you remembered which page you were on on the previous category searches, you can always go back to it. Now something else to point out, if you're particularly interested in a specific niche or type of product, you can search a subcategory instead of the entire category. For instance, sports and outdoors. If you were a fitness fanatic, you know, if you work out a lot and you think that those are the kind of products you'd be interested in, you can search a subcategory too. So I would just click on sports and fitness. Again, just check to make sure the price is there and it is. I'm gonna click the four boxes. It doesn't make a huge amount of difference. It's just something I got in the habit of doing. And then click Jungle Scout. And now you'll only be searching inside the fitness area. What you will find in sports and fitness, I can tell you now, is the initial results, you're gonna be getting a lot of clothing. But it's just to point it out. So to reiterate, when you're doing your searches, if at any point you wanna stop, make a note of how many pages you've searched in that category and write it down somewhere. So that when you come back, you can start from roughly the same place. But as I mentioned, if you did 10 pages, start on page nine. It means it's less likely you'll miss a really fabulous product. So just to reiterate, the deeper you go in the results, in other words, the more pages you search, the better your results are gonna be and the more products you're going to have. Moving forward in the next lesson, we're gonna go and take all those products and we're gonna evaluate them to see if they're viable. So you will lose a lot of the products you find. And especially if you're only searching in the first few pages, the more pages you search, the more likely that you're gonna find a viable product or multiple viable products. Also, even after we go into the lesson where we narrow these products down to just three, all those other products that make it through the next lesson are gonna be viable and they're a valuable asset for you to have. You may launch one of the three, and once that's up and doing really well, you can come back to your list and see what else there is. So the more time you spend on this, the better. Product selection is the most time consuming, but the most important part of the entire process. So spending a little bit of extra time, going that extra yard will get you better results and more results. Now we did recommend you have a list of 15 to 20, but using Jungle Scout, it makes it a lot easier. So you can go further than that. Obviously you don't have to, but again, the more you do, the better your results might be. So go up to 30 products even, and do it across more than one category. However, don't pick four different categories and then and only go and search four or five pages in each category. The absolute minimum we recommend is 10 pages. And going beyond that, you're going to get even better results. So pick your first category, go 10, 20, 30 pages deep, see what you find. Then go and pick another category and do exactly the same thing. The more work you do now, the better your results are gonna be. Now, I'm actually gonna close down this part of the video. I'm gonna go away, I'm gonna search for some more products so we have more examples to look at in the next lesson. Your challenge, go and find as many products as you can. Don't restrict yourself to 15 to 20. Do more and you will definitely benefit from it. So what's next? So now you've learned how to build your list of primary products. In the next lesson, you're going to add competing products to your list. This will prove the viability of your primary products. Your action step, build a list of at least 15 to 20 primary products. And as I mentioned previously, go beyond this if you can. Spend more time on it. The more time you spend, the more products you get, the better your results will be. But that's it for this lesson. Take care.